episode 204. You can't explain it unless you've been here and experienced it firsthand. Once you've been to Vision and you've taken that opportunity, you've stepped out and you've networked and you've met people, you'll be back. And there's an energy level that you can't not buy into. Welcome, aftermarketers, to On Point from Remarkable Results Radio and a special interview from an auto care industry professional. On Point. Welcome, aftermarket professionals, to Remarkable Results Radio and to episode 204. I'm your humble host, Carm Capriato, and I so enjoy bringing you these soon to be classic episodes on everything automotive aftermarket. This episode is brought to you by Federal Mogul Motor Parts. Search for parts, get the latest technical updates and sign up for their new Garage Rewards Loyalty Program at their all-new website, fmmotorparts.com. Hey, you've heard me say how impassioned I am in building a stronger aftermarket. Now, after being at Vision 2017 and meeting so many of my listeners, I'm convinced that what we're doing here on the podcast is important to the industry. We are building such a powerful community of aftermarket professionals who are into maximum learning mode. I'm humbled and honored to know that the podcast is making a difference for people. It is all in the power of the story that my guests pay forward each week. You're about to hear an episode from the Vision High Tech Training and Expo's leadership team. March 2017 was the 25th year for Vision, and you'll get a first-hand look at the event, how it started, and what it takes to put on an event this size. Hey, I do want to welcome my new Facebook friends like Chris Davis, Rusty Flake, Jeff Bly, and Dave Nestroy. And to my new LinkedIn connections, Reggie Stewart and Don Walcheski. Connect with me with any idea for the show or a guest request. Don't forget my email, carm at remarkableresults.biz, B-I-Z. Now for extreme content. I can't stress the Town Hall Live more. By the way, the Town Hall is free to watch. The topics are good. However, the discussion, excellent. So go to my YouTube channel or the Town Hall page on the website and watch the replays. Watch them like a documentary and learn like a seminar. And don't forget to download the podcast app from the App Store. Did you know that 66% of people enjoy podcasts on their smartphone or tablet? Now meet my Vision Leadership Roundtable. Joining me in my Vision 2017 studio are Sherry Hamilton, the show manager. Now Sherry is also executive director of ASA Midwest and chairman of AMI. One of the co-founders of Vision, Shop owner Jerry Holcomb joins us from SNS Service in Kansas City, and co chairman Ron Haugen from West Side Auto Pro in Des Moines, Iowa, and co chairman James Copeland from Midwest Auto Works in Columbia, Missouri round out the program. Getting a behind the scenes tour, if you will, on vision from the people who are responsible for this top industry event is unprecedented. I'm glad to be able to present this to you and to encourage everyone who attended Vision to listen and learn something about Vision that you did not know. And those who have not attended, maybe this is just the right amount of motivation to make you want to be part of it next year. Go to RemarkableResults.biz slash E204 for the show notes and extra pictures taken in the studio. This was recorded at Vision 2015, the 25th anniversary. Here is Sherry Hamilton, Cherry Holcomb, Ron Haugen, and James Copeland. Hey, everybody. I'm here at Vision 2017 in Kansas City, Vision High Tech Training and Expo. And it's my first time here. And when Sherry Hamilton was so kind to say, we have you this pole position, this beautiful 8 by 13 room. You're going to turn it into a studio. We're glad to have you here. And I walked in and I saw this. I was so happy, uh, Sherry, to see what you did. And I'm having a blast because it's my first vision. And don't ask me why it took me so long to get here. but. Um, I'm thrilled to be here, and with me is uh, Sherry Hamilton, the show manager and the executive director of ASA Midwest. I can't imagine uh, how much sleep you have not been living on in the last two weeks. <laughs> not much. <laughs> uh, Co-chairman Ron Haugen, co-chairman from Westside Auto Pros. Hi, Ron. Hi, Carm. Ron was with me in episode 107 and recently did a town hall live on succession planning off the charts. Thank you so we had much for that. a great time with that. Your, your co-chairman, James Copeland, new to the uh, podcast from Midwest Auto Works. Glad to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You guys work together, I, I mean, really well together. I mean, you make a lot of decisions, or do you just say, uh, Sherry, I'll get it done? Well, we're, we're kind of a sounding board. You know, Sherry's got most of the ideas, and uh, 
she kind of just bounces them off us. And um, Ron and I work together to help uh, work through situations. Well, we're a good team. Great. Glad to hear it. And we have Jerry Holcomb. Hello, Jerry. Good afternoon, Carm. Good to be here. Episode 129, one of my favorites. <laughs> I loved it. Love this guy, SNS Service Center. And uh, so why is Jerry here? Jerry is the founder of Vision. Wow, how's it feel to be called the founder, the 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 head guy? The it was was this your vision? It's kind of a long story, Carm. I don't know how much time we've got, but the short, abridged version is: we wanted to put on some training in Kansas City. We wanted it to be top quality, mechanical and management training at a price that people could bring their whole shop. It's just there was nothing like that back in the early 90s when we started this. So we've uh, done a what I consider a real good job sticking with that mission, and uh, it shows by the, the way the show has grown. Are you proud of where the organization sits right now, the, the amount of people that are here, the reach that you have? The numbers are phenomenal, the, the places and the, the amount of people that are here. I think close to 1,700 are signed up for registration for the classes compared to about 200 our first first meeting. Wow. Well, there, there's some growth. A little bit of growth. Sherry, has it been positive growth every year for all these years? It has been positive growth. Absolutely. When did it start? 1992. 25th anniversary. Right now? This is our 25th. How cool is that? W- w- when are we having cake? <laughs> We have a big celebration tomorrow night. I know. I can't wait. It is great. Rumor has it you're getting some kind of an award. Uh, I'm going to graduate with a uh, uh, basically a master's degree in uh, automotive management. Wow. The school of hard knocks. It's been a school of hard knocks. Absolutely. Did you earn it by doing all the tests or is it an honorarium because you're wrong? Um, no, it's not an honorarium. <laughs> uh, it's, it came through attending training and stuff and, and filling out the the forms and earning the credits and stuff. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, I can't imagine the work, Sherry, that it takes to pull off something like this, because this reminds me of a mini apex. I mean, the booths and uh, the the exhibition hall, uh, it looks like every major vendor is here. I mean, there's a tractor trailer inside the hall. Yes. It's very common to have semis inside our exhibit hall. Um, the equipment that I've seen, the parts suppliers, the, the business coaches, it, it, it seems like there's a representation of every facet of the industry. There is. It's 60,000 square feet, and it's packed with every tool, product, service, equipment that you could imagine uh, that uh, the automotive service professional needs. And it's a great place. It's small enough to be manageable. Within a day and a half, you can uh, have access to uh, a lot of great salespeople who know the product. You're looking for questions. You need to do a comparison of uh, products before you make your purchase. It's an easy, manageable show floor uh, to be able to do. Um, Plus, get some great training while you're here. And we kicked it off last night with a tool expo for three hours from four to seven. And that was all high-tech diagnostic equipment, um, which is what these attendees needed more time to be able to spend. So when you sum up your leadership here and the the workload, is it easy and manageable? (laughs) It takes a village. (laughs) Ah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Yes, it takes a village. It is not all me. I, I, I help lead um, my office, but I have a great support team that helps execute um, the huge to-do list. We have a project management system that we utilize to uh, try to keep track of everything that has to get done and who's going to get it done and when it's going to get done by. We have a committee that we bounce things off of, and when they come on site, they all have their uh, roles and responsibilities, and a lot of volunteers help as well. So it takes a village. Let's talk about that. I imagine that Ron and James, do you lead those committees? Uh, it's a co-chair role, and, you know, we have meetings for, like, uh, selecting trainers and uh, curriculum for the classes that are going to be taught. There's a vetting process that we go through, and uh, that starts pretty early on. Um, we do evaluations uh, through our training, and we use the evaluation forms to vet our trainers and, and the classes we're going to provide. So from the year before... Absolutely. What if a brand new trainer wants to be part of Vision? They've got a great course. How do you vet 
someone new. They've got to have references for sure. Sherry normally checks that out. We need to see their handouts. And, um, you know, it's it's a lot of through referral. We'd have to talk to somebody that's been through a class because we're, we're trying to offer the best training available. And people travel a long ways to come get that training. And so we need to keep it at a high level. And you can't disappoint. Absolutely not. So do you feel, Ron, the, 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 the pressure to be sure that each year the quality of education continues to rise? Oh, certainly. I mean, I mean, that's that's what's caused this this whole uh, training expo and, and vision to grow is is I mean, we've become known as the, the place to go get quality training. And and that's our responsibility is to make sure that we continue to provide that and, and don't, you know, slack and, and let it let it fall off. What's the percentage of shop owners and technicians registered? I would have to look at this year's numbers, but we're probably, I would say, 70, 30, 70 percent technical, 30 uh, percent management, shop owners, managers. It might it might even be 60, 40. So, so in the in the 60, when you say technicians, where did the service advisors fall into? They're in that management side. They're oh, in they're the, in the 40. They're in the 40. They're in the 40. Yeah. Is that the number that you want, ideally, 60, 40, or do you want a 50, 50 split? We have flexibility to grow the program either way. Uh-huh. And, you know, when you're looking at exhibitors, they're looking for the shop owners and managers. But there's a lot of shops where the shop owners are looking to their technicians for the advice and knowledge and what equipment they're going to buy. So having them here is just as important as well. What are you the proudest of? The impact that this has made in the industry. Um, seeing the energy, seeing how people are excited. Um, Wednesday night, I was exhausted, went to bed, and I'm starting to flip through the Facebook feed before I go to bed, and seeing people so excited posting to Facebook. I'm at Vision. I just, you know, I just arrived at um, the Sheraton Hotel. Um, you know, can't wait. I've got classes tomorrow, and you know, they're excited about being here and seeing that passion, um, and, and just the impact that we're making in the industry. It's it's a family. It's it's more than just an event. There's an energy and um, you know, networking and excitement that's here that's hard to explain. And seeing that and seeing how we make that final impact and the difference in shop owners' lives, technicians' lives, and educators, um, I think that's what makes me most proud. So it's an event. Did you ever think it would be an event this big, this wide-ranging, Jerry? We had no idea. <laughs> like I say, we had a couple of hundred probably at the first one. But the name of it was Vision 2000. We called it Vision 2000. We thought 2000 was so far off in the future that we would never get there. Of course, then when we got to 2000, what are we, we going to call it now? We thought, do we jump ahead 10 years, 20 years? No, we're going to call it Vision. And uh, it was a wise choice because it still shows touches of the vision. I'm talking with Jonathan Chikelli, a technical product specialist with Federal Mogul Motor Parts. Now, you're visiting shops every day, so when you put product in the hands of the technicians and service advisors, what are they saying? Uh, going back to Federal Mogul's long-term um, presence in the, in the industry, they already know the product, and some of them we don't have to say much about. It's the newer product, the latest innovations that we come out with that just blow people away. So, Jonathan, you take that brand-new OEX pad and you put it into the hands of of a technician, what happens? They look at it and are kind of speechless for a couple seconds and they just can't deny that it's an awesome looking product and they can't deny that it's gonna work fantastic on their vehicles. Now another phenomenal product line that is just one of the most iconic brands in the entire industry is Moog. Now there's a lot going on with Moog. The newest thing with Moog is gonna be, I think the most important thing to the shops is a newer design ball joint that we created and that was off of technicians responses to a boot design that's that compression loaded ball joint with the pre-installed integral dust boot absolutely and as soon as i pull that out of a box and show a technician or a shop owner they just were like this is amazing so jonathan would you say that you're a champion for federal mogul motor parts and all the premium products absolutely and a champion for all the training I'm I'm very big on training. I've always been in training since I've been in the professional field. So just to come back and support on the other end has just been an awesome experience. Federal Mogul Motor Parks' Garage Gurus is your go-to source for the vehicle training, technology, and answers you need to keep your next job on track. On site, online, or on demand, the gurus are here to help keep your business and your career on the road to success. Visit 
fmgarageguru.com. So what are the greatest challenges, Sherry, of putting this on? And I'd like to ask this of our co-chairman, but you as a, the show manager, the biggest challenge is to put something like this. There's just so many moving pieces to this program um, with having an exhibit hall and exhibitors coming in and the training and then just executing everything. And we try to do things special with this program to where every little finite um, detail is covered. We want to treat uh, the attendees when they come like professionals. Our goal is to raise the professionalism in this industry as well. So when they come and they're treated as professionals, um, they go back to their shops and they have a sense of pride about what they're doing and what they've accomplished and what they've learned and then energetic and motivated to implement those things. Um, that takes a lot of extra work to be able to make sure that the registration process is smooth, that um, all the trainers have everything that they need um, to be able to make that class a success. And you've marketed, and there's just so many different moving pieces to the program that uh, there are quite a few different challenges. I want to get back to the co-chairman on the word challenges, but I want to ask you, Sherry, what's your favorite part of what you do to pull this off? The favorite part is, again, being here, um, all of the hugs, the smiles, the people who are ex- so excited um, to be here. Seeing that energy level, you you can't explain it unless you've been here and experienced it firsthand. Once you've been to Vision and you've taken that opportunity, you've stepped out and you've networked and you've met people, you'll be back. And there's an energy level that you can't not buy into. Okay, so there's about 1,700 here this year? Just for management and technical training. Just just for, okay, it, that, that's just the attendees. So all the support people takes you way up. The technicians and, and, and the shop owners get to know Sherry Hamilton? Um, they, well, yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Wow, um, I, I must have hit a chord here. Yeah. <laughs> there, I mean, I, hey, Sherry, how are you? I mean, I've made okay. a lot of family, you know, a lot of, a lot of friends. It, it feels like family being here. Um, a lot of personal connections and you hear the stories and you hear the struggles with their business and, hey, Sherry, I've got a new technician. Um, what classes would you recommend? Um, you know, hey, I'm looking at this and, um, I take a real personal interest again, because I think of my background with my parents shop, it gives me that passion and really understanding um, the angle that they have. And I want them to get the most out of their investment. These shops are making a big investment to bring their employees here, um, to invest in you know the time that they're paying them, the travel, the hotel, the registration fees. I don't take that lightly, that I want to make sure they get their value for their money. Let's go back to our co-chairman. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, when I asked Sherry a few moments ago about the greatest challenges that you see, and and I'm not sure that's the right way to approach a question. Uh, maybe the, the right question would say is, tell me what you love the most about the show and what are you planning for next year? Well, I don't know that we want to disclose. Oh, I know, I know. Year. It's like the Oscars. Um, I, but, I know. You know, when, when you posed it as, a, as the word challenge, um, I, I, what immediately came to my mind, I mean, we, we've got record attendance. We've got 1,700 people here registered for training. But what I see is the challenge. There's at least another 1,700 people within driving distance that have never been to vision. And, and, and that's my goal is, is to get, you know, my, my colleagues and, and other shops in my area to come see this and, and, and come experience this because once they do, they will continue to come back. That's why it continues to grow. But to take somebody that has never been here before, I mean, it, it frustrates me that we're only at 1,700 and that's a record number. A great follow up here is recruitment and how your goals next year are 2,000. How do you accomplish that and what we, the podcast, can do to help you? Yeah, absolutely. First, I'd like to say that uh, Sherry and her staff makes our job really a lot easier than it probably should be i don't know what jerry did before she had they had sherry on board but uh, she does an amazing job and um, i think you know what i think is the neatest thing about vision is we all joined asa because we wanted to help the industry and this is by far the best way that we can help our industry by training shop owners by training uh, technicians and service advisors and bringing that level of professionalism to a higher level and that's what it's all about that's why we joined ASA so recruitment if you have 1700 and you're frustrated that within the sound of our voice or if you will the diameter around Kansas City there's another 1700 that need to be here do we hire the bus do we go out and get them i mean what, what what's the strategy 
Well, I think we could lean on our Remarkable Results Radio to help spread the word. I think so. Okay. Yeah. We could, we, Great idea, we, we can We can absolutely do this. Thank you very much. There's nothing nothing that we can't do to spread the word. And I think by doing this roundtable here, uh, we want people to hear that there's real people behind Vision. They're from the industry. You're wondering where the rest of the world is. Is it apathy? Is it that, oh my, you have the top 10% here. Why else should we, be, should we worry about anything else? And I think that's something very well to add is I think this is the cream of the crop within the industry across the country. So we may not get everyone here, but those people who are hungry for the training and the quality of training that we're offering at Vision, we have the cream of the crop. They're in from, um, you know, f- I would, f- 44 states, um, Canadian, you know, five Canadian provinces. Um, we have Africa, Bahamas, St. Martin. Um, they're in from everywhere. So we've got the cream of the crop. We could have the mass numbers, but I think there's a lot to be said for the quality of shop owners and technicians that are here. Torre, I think, is our African's first name. Befriended me on Facebook, and he's my biggest international fan for the for the podcast. It's a salute out to him for coming that far. And w- when I think about... I've done tons of 200 podcasts in counting, and I'm not sure when this is going to come out. But the word networking happens to be, in my opinion, networking to me was the single greatest benefit that comes out. The training is great, and you learn from that, but you learn when the seminars aren't on if you invest in that time. And ad nauseum, we have discussed this on so many podcasts where people saying it's about the networking. You've got to get there. Why doesn't that register with a lot of people for them to appreciate? I've got all this great training, but I have I, at a higher elevated level is the value of the networking. Well, I would like to say that there's a ton of networking that goes on at this show. I mean, we are we have so many technicians and shop owners condensed into such a small area. And uh, if you check out the. Uh, the bar at the hotel tonight, you'll see tons of people networking over there. And uh, I think that's one of the great things about Vision. And I think this this whole arrangement that we have here in this small area, bringing all these people together, is a perfect environment for networking. And I think that's a great thing about Vision. You, you agree. It's, it's, it's one of the most powerful elements here. You know, I look back. I've been in business for, for this is my 20th year. And I look back the, the first couple of years that I was in business. I mean, I was dumb and I was broke. And, and, you know, I think at some point in time, uh, I got into some groups and stuff and got into some networking, became friends with people like Jerry, and, and you learn from them. And I think there's a little bit of pride in our industry. You know, a lot of us started out as technicians, and we don't, we don't want to admit that we need help or we don't know everything. And, and so, you know, you hesitate to, to get involved, but once you do and start networking, I mean, I've got hundreds of people here. I could pick up the phone and call and, and soundboard an idea off or, or ask a question and get an answer. And I mean, that's priceless. It's like your own board of directors. You came on and did a town hall live with us on training events. And, and Sherry, I can't remember if it was that event because occasionally some of the podcasts do blur in my mind. And I always say, oh, my God, there's a great sound bite. I can't remember where it came from. And there was one about – and I think it was Matt Fanslow. He was talking about – he was scolding people that were at the show that went to the room at night and never hung around – with, with the group because he feels that it, it was one of the most single benefits is just hanging out, shaking some hands, meeting people and building your personal network, owner, technician, industry leader, supplier. Correct. We've got a great uh, bar and lounge area at the Sheraton, which is kind of one of the uh, one of the gathering points in the evening. And not a, there are people with drinks in their hands, but there's a lot of people sitting around talking and as natural with this crowd, it tends to, the conversations tend to go towards business and repairing cars and, hey, I had this one, have you ever, you know, and off the conversations go. And that's sometimes too where even more valuable learning happens um, to be able to to make those connections and share those stories. This is Jerry. Let me add on to, to that. The uh, walk through the bar and and just the ability to see all the people having fun, enjoying themselves. From my point of view, when I walk through, it's it's all these people that are coming to something that we started a long time ago. But it's also 
as I walk through, hey, Jerry, hey, Jerry. And there's these people, I can't remember all their names, but I've met them, talked to them at one time or another. One of my biggest deals is hanging out at the reg desk on the evenings when most people are going to sign up. Friday evenings always is a great. And people come up, hey, Jerry, how you doing this year? It's it's a wonderful feeling that, well, like every, like everybody else has said, the closeness and the, I can't think of the right word, the camaraderie, the camaraderie. Yeah. 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 It's it's just unbelievable. I was at the bar last night. I was on my way to my room, and I said, whoa. I was exhausted. I had only a few hours of sleep. And I go, whoa. And I and I started to see podcast alumni, and I just had a stop, and a couple hours later, yeah. And if you've never been connected in this industry, to to step into that can some sometimes be a scary thing. But look at Tarai, who's coming from Africa. He started making connections through other industry social media, through websites, and started forming those friendships and asking questions. And he's almost like a local celebrity now walking through. And oh, God. Um, oh yeah. So Everybody's taking, getting first their time picture in, taken with him. Yes, and first time in the U.S., but he's made, look at the connections and networking that would have never been possible without the Vision Program. Yeah, it, what, a, what an incredible event. Um, I, I'm impressed uh, with what you have here. And, uh, and I see technology that's out there. I mean, tell me about some of the technology that the attendees of Vision are going to go out and see in the show floor. I mean, it's the latest, greatest, cutting edge. Any any piece of equipment or tools you need to work in your shop are here at this show. And I have to believe that the old adage is you don't know what you don't know. And I think the people that aren't here, because the expo is free, why would you not come to this tool expo just to see what was here? They just don't know it's here, or they don't believe there's value in it, and that's the barrier trying to get that message out. If it's not on that show floor, it either doesn't exist or you don't need it. And these are also exhibitors who are supporting the future of our industry. They're helping underwrite the training um, to help keep this program affordable so that you can bring your entire crew here. Do you have a waiting list of vendors who want to be on that show floor? We sold out last year. We expanded the show floor this year, and I had seven possible booth spaces that were left this year that I could have sold. We will have another sellout again. Um, very Next year, we'll no doubt sell out again. So we've expanded the floor as much as we can, and we actually start signups beginning tomorrow for the 2018 event. And it's not uncommon by the end of that that our show floor will already be 70, sometimes 80% sold out by the, before the this show is even over. So training. Let's, let's talk about the seminars that are going on. Um, what an incredible list. Some of the best trainers, shop owners and technicians say in the industry, quote, quote, are here. Obviously, they want to be here because this is such a great event. But when they're vetted and the attendees, you know, check the boxes as to the value, do you sit there as a team and say, wow, we knocked it out of the park again? Putting together the schedule is a pretty ominous feat. It's like putting together, I, I relate it to putting together a puzzle without a picture. Because you need to make sure that during each session you have something for every level of technician, service advisor, shop owner, whether it's an advanced drivability tech, whether you've got a new lube tech. We have to make sure, okay, do you have your import? Um, do you have your undercar? Is it all covered? In a we- and if we... Have we reached every topic that is relevant to today's automotive service professional? And we're trying to pack that within three and a half days. Where is that currentness coming from, Ron? You're all staying. Your committees are staying cutting edge. You're you're leading shops. So you see what's coming in and you bring those ideas to the committee. And then you find an instructor that can come in and teach that. Well, part of it, Carm, is... uh... The instructors stay ahead, too. So, I mean, if there's new technology comes out on a car, somebody has written a class on that to train. And so then they'll submit those classes uh, for consideration. And then, of course, as a committee, we're looking at it. And, I mean, we have shops. We're living it. So we know, hey, yeah, there there is a demand for for GDI fuel injection. There is a demand for this. And, and here's a class for that. And, and so it... it it kind of works together to, to, to correct itself. We don't have to typically go out and look for a specific class. Um, and, and Sherry's right. I mean, it is, it's just overwhelming the, the number of classes that are submitted for consideration. So you have people wanting to be here. 
you have a chance to sit back and pick the subjects you want. Is there more, and I haven't looked at the schedule to a level that I've checked the boxes and figured it out, but there's more technician training than there is management training because of the mix you have? Partly because of the mix, but also because your, um, a lot of your technical classes are smaller just because of the topics and trying to relate that information. Uh, management topics are easier to teach, depending upon the topic, can be easier taught in a large ballroom. But yet we have some pretty large um, technical training classes as well, several of them that are approaching uh, 200 in a class um, with a uh, 600, 800-page handout. Um, lot to cover in an all-day session. I was told that some of the classes, the manual, is absolutely worth the price of admission. Hands down. Yeah, that's true. Well, there was one particular uh, handout that was 800 pages, and they're calling it the Bible. <laughs> it was written by John Thornton. Oh, my. And uh, John Scott is, and, yeah, and Scott Hanna, Manna, I'm sorry. But uh, I understand that when people see this, they just they can't even believe it. It's so thick, can't even barely pick it up. It's two books, I think. It has yeah. two books, two volumes, just for one all-day class. Having to do with technical classes, having more of them, part of that reason is also you've got beginners. What uh, what level are the technicians that are going to take it? So you, you can't just throw out a particular class and expect everybody to sign up. This guy needs it. This guy's got enough information that he feels he can step up to to another one. So they're, they're, that's one of the other deciding factors on which classes. Absolutely worth the price of admission. Okay, banquet, Saturday night. Now, this, this episode is going to come out after the banquet. What exciting things are going to go on at the banquet? So we're really excited this year to add the Automotive Management Institute graduation for 2017. So we have a lot of um, a lot of shop owners, managers that have been taking training for years, that have earned enough credits to be able to get their AAM or their AMAM, so their masters. And so they will be walking in cap and gown uh, tomorrow evening and uh, receiving their diploma on stage. And we have several uh, several recipients right here with us. So you're going to do the a the M A A M. Am I right? The master's program. The program. master's program. It has the M in front of the A A M. Am I right? A M A M. Oh, a M A M A M. No F M. <laughs> that means we'll be morning people. <laughs> oh, very good. I love it. Excellent. Well, congratulations to both of you. Uh, how long has it been since you've worn a cap and gown? I have never wore a cap and gown in my life. Really? Even when you got your AAM, they didn't ask you to walk? No, at that time you had to go to uh, Texas to participate in it. Ah, and right. that's why this is a big deal yeah. that it's it's actually being held here. Wasn't there something at Apex last year? Not at Apex. There was at um, uh, Nace and Cars Nace in Cars. Anaheim. That's, correct. that's right, Nace Cars in Anaheim. And so this, this is actually taking the place uh, of that on the Cars side, if you will. You are uh, involved with AMI. I am. You are the chairman of the board, am I right? Yes, I am the current chairman of AMI. Wow, how cool is that? So it's really exciting to bring this to my hometown. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine it is. What else is going to go on at the big banquet? Uh, so we'll, we will have that. We'll then uh, enjoy a wonderful uh, special dinner that's being prepared for the group. And then we'll go into our award ceremony. And we have scholarships that are being presented. We have um, our first ever Dave DeCourcy Memorial Scholarship that will be presented wow. um, in honor of Dave, who we, uh, you know, unfortunately lost at the end of the year. Um, then we have... Um, uh, Green Star Service Facilities, $1,000 scholarship recipients. Uh, we have a, new, a service facility of the year. Um, there's a President's Award. There's quite a, diff quite a few different things that are going on. Uh, we just uh, finished a lunch um, here a bit ago and um, awarded our 2017 Educator of the Year uh, Award, and that'll be uh, mentioned again tomorrow night. So great time to celebrate for, uh, for the independence within our industry. Sherry, are these awards only for ASA Midwest? or do you reach beyond your boundary? They reach beyond. So it's eligible to people who are attending Vision, and uh, the scholarships are based on, for high school students, um, there's scholarships that are based uh, within our six states, but we have a scholarship that's being given away by Auto Shop Solutions, two of them actually, and that's for any high school student throughout the country that's pursuing a degree. 
that's still available, and they can apply for that until April 1st. And uh, the Service Facility of the Year, Green Star, those those de- designations and uh, Management Scholarship, Technical Scholarship, and Dave DeCourcy are eligible for anybody who's attending the Vision Program. Is the industry doing enough for scholarships and, and, and engaging uh, youth to get involved in, in education or joining the industry? We're doing a lot more than we ever have, but I don't think we're doing as much as we should. Is it the messaging? Is it that we need recruitment and help to get the word out? I think that can be part of it, and and that was a need that we saw in the ASA Midwest level, and we actually formed a Technicians of Tomorrow Educational Foundation, which helps support those scholarships, and that's how the money that um, was donated um, on behalf of Dave DeCourcy yeah. um, to establish that scholarship is being run through that 501c3 uh, to be able to um, to provide some scholarships. Uh, there's more opportunities, and so it's we do. We need support from from the industry to be able to help fund these in the future. And then we need to get the word out to uh, the prospective recipients. You just almost answered the question that I had, but where, how is this being funded? Are, are you doing Chinese auctions? Are you doing golf outings? Uh, how, where's the money coming from? So we've had um, GoFundMe. We've had some various right. fundraising projects. Um, so we're, we have a few that are planned here, um, you know, coming up, and that's something that one of our committees is working on. Um, but uh, we have a GoFundMe account that is opened up that you can connect through uh, the Vision app and uh, to be able to to donate to, to this year's and, um, you know, continue on the tradition of these scholarships. That we're... Any final words? The world's going to listen to this. We, we obviously would love to play this over and over and maybe – promote the heck out of it as Vision 2018 starts showing up. I get new listeners every day. Podcast audience is growing huge. So, you know, in in nine months from now, what do you want people to to know about Vision, Ron? Uh, Nine months from now, I want people to know that they need to sign up and come to Vision 2018. (laughs) Yeah, that's my point. Glasses are filling quickly. (laughs) Yeah. And the message, if you've listened to this episode, you get it. Any final words? Well, I guess what I would say, and and I, I... I'm not really saying this tongue in cheek, but if somebody's thinking of coming to vision, register, come attend. And if you don't think it was worth your time or money, call me and I will personally refund your registration fee. Wow. Wow. Oh, there's a big, bold move. I'm sold on it. Should I put your email in the uh, episode? Absolutely. See, there's a man. (laughs) Honorable. Thank you. How about you, James? Yeah, I'd like to second what Ron said. Uh, Show up. If you don't like it, call Ron and he'll refund your money. (laughs) (laughs) What are friends for? Uh, I would just like to say that I I think that the automotive repair industry is a great industry to be in right now. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for young people to get into the industry, but it's going to take a lot of training. And uh, there's not a better place to go to get that training than at Vision. And it'll give you a chance to see some of the neat tools and equipment and things that are going on in the industry. So anybody even interested in in getting in the industry can get a free pass to the expo to see what it's all about. Our founder, Mr. Holcomb. The final words, come to vision. I had somebody ask me earlier in the day, what are you going to do in three years when it's vision 2020? Play on 2020 vision, of course. Uh, I said, I hope... It's still going strong. I hope I'm still here having something to do with it. But whether I'm here or not, people need to come. Is there a Founders Award? He'll be presenting a President's Award tomorrow evening as ASA Midwest. Wow. Good. How great. Before your final words, I have a question. So how many days are you going to sleep after Sunday? (laughs) Not enough. (laughs) Not enough. There's still a trailer to unload, to unload. Thank you notes to to write, bills to pay. There's still a lot of work after uh, after the event's over, and you almost kind of go into a little bit of a. I must. I phrased it earlier today to one of the staff members to say, just kind of prepare yourself. It's almost kind of like a postpartum depression that you work so hard and it all comes together, and you're on this high through the entire weekend. Um, you know, through the entire four days, and we've been on site since Monday. Um, so Monday through Sunday, and then you go home and. And it's over and it's gone and there's still a lot to show for it but you almost kind of go through a little bit of a postpartum depression because that energy and excitement that you come off on from the weekend is is so high um, but it takes a little while to recover but uh, we're already my my wheels are spinning on Sunday night and I'm already writing and making notes for next year so you need like three months to 
rationalize what happened, do postmortems to figure it out, and then you ramp it up again, and you have a this nine month curve to boom, and then you fall off the cliff on Sunday <laughs> night, right? Correct. Yeah, wow. we start uh, pretty quickly. Um, start submitting, you know, open uh, course submissions, looking for people to submit courses. Uh, again, the show floor is already sold. Um, you know, we have booths that are still available, but we start uh, soliciting for that and start making plans. And well, great. Final comment for a, a, a listener in so many months going to hear this and, and wants to hear a direct plea from the show manager. I would say you, if you haven't been here, you need to give Vision a chance. If if you're struggling, um, the inspiration that you get out of this event, coming and attending and knowing that you are not in this industry alone. There are other shop owners, technicians, service advisors that are going through the same struggles and face many of the same challenges. You just need to be here to understand you're not alone. We're not competition. As an industry, this industry is very united. And uh, come and be a part of it, and it will make a difference in your life. Thank you, Sherry Hamilton, show manager vision. We're here at 2017 doing this live interview. She's also the executive director of ASA. To Ron Haugen, sitting over to my right from Westside Auto Pro. To Jerry Holcomb, our founder a vision from SNS Auto Service and James Copeland, my new friend from Midwest Auto Works. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Keith Arm. Hey, Aftermarketers, thanks for joining us. See the show notes and special pictures for this vision roundtable at remarkableresults.biz slash E204. So glad you could join in aftermarket intelligence. You're engaged with me because you also care about building a stronger aftermarket. And thanks. I love to hear from you. Any questions or comments, email me at carm at remarkableresults.biz or head over to the contact page on the website or find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. You are an important reason I bring this library of interviews, this powerhouse of content. I hope you are profiting from wisdom and insights found in each episode. Hey, it's favorite time. Tell a friend about the podcast. It's simple. Just social share from the website. And thanks for your support. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from another inspiring aftermarket professional. Until next time.